Hi, I'm Josh Constein here at the Tech Fellow Awards in San Francisco at the Museum of Modern Art. And I'm speaking with Clara Shai, the, uh, the co-founder and CEO of Hearsay Social, uh, a, a marketing platform. And she was also recently nominated uh, and added to the board of directors for Starbucks. So maybe you could talk to me a little bit about uh, what you're doing with Starbucks. Absolutely. I mean, I think it was it was such a it was such an honor to be part of the organization, and I, I'm only a few months into it, but just learning as much as I can about uh, several completely new businesses, but also thinking about ways that technology and, and digital can be infused across the business. So, what what is Starbucks going to be doing next in terms of technology? You know, I'm I'm still I'm still in learning learning mode, so I think it's it's. TBD. I'm, I, I think I, the technology team has done a fantastic job on Facebook, on Twitter. There's a lot of, of great um, ideas in the works, uh, and I'm, I'm still learning and getting up to speed on those myself. Sure. And so maybe you could tell me a little bit about what's going on next for Hearsay Social. Sure. It's just been a phenomenal year for us. A year ago, we had um, you know, less than a fifth of the people that we do now, less than a sixth of the customers. And especially with Facebook's S1 filing a few weeks ago, the momentum couldn't be greater for social marketing. And so you know, our focus in particular on corporate, local, and, and seeing marketing get more personalized, more targeted over time has just been phenomenal for the market. And, and we couldn't be more excited to be at the helm of that. So is everyone finally like sitting up and taking notice of Facebook? Was it something that people thought they could experiment with or just wait on and now finally they're, they're saying we have to be there? I think yes and no. I mean, in a sense that everyone was, was dabbling in it the last few years. They had at least a corporate page, but now they're, they're asking, what's the ROI? What else can we do besides the branding aspect? How can we actually tie this back to marketing and sales metrics that we really care about? What are some of the coolest things that you've seen people and brands do on Facebook to get noticed? You know, if, if I was a small brand and I was trying to come up, like what would I do to, to get some attention? Sure. So one of the other winners tonight was actually the creator of Farmville, which, as you know, is one of those most popular social games ever. And one of our customers, Farmers Insurance Group, we worked with them over the summer um, to run a campaign on all of their um, agent Facebook pages driving um, traffic back to Farmville and, and having a promotion there and, and driving likes through that. And that actually resulted in the most successful Facebook marketing campaign in history. They drove over 2.2 million new fans to the brand. And if you think about a business like insurance, I mean, you're really trying to reach everyone because everyone needs insurance. And so um, for them to, to have that big of a marketing funnel and then be able to convert those into actual paying policyholders, it was, it was really neat to see. Past so social games. What about in store? If, if somebody wanted to, to get their store notice, you know, and you know, I, maybe I've got my Facebook presence, but you know, in my store, how do people even know to get there? And what can I do to to make my my coffee shop stand out from the one next door? That's a great question, and we've seen a lot of interesting stores like put signs up, or they'll they'll print it on their cups, or they'll have stickers that they put on their window. Um, but where we see a lot of interest is, you know, with check-ins. I mean, everyone has an iPhone or an Android, and if they don't, they're gonna they're thinking of getting one soon. And as people check into these stores and they either redeem points or it's somehow linked back to the loyalty program, there's a lot you can do not only to drive engagement and and combine the offline experience with the online, but also to link that activity back and start to calculate social media ROI. Now you work with some some really big brands, but are they ever scared about the content that they might be seen beside, or the kind of stuff that could end up on their their you know the the feedback they get on their Facebook wall? That's a great question. So I mean, typically before brands will will roll out our content publisher that lets them you know suggest out content or post directly to all the local store pages or country pages and profiles and, and Twitter accounts. They'll use our brand protection module, which you know includes something like. Uh, things like our rogue page finder where we'll find all of the the brand pages that are out there and all of the rogue mentions whether it's profanity or other sensitive terms that they don't want discussed this is especially popular in highly regulated industries and so the protection comes first and then they think about the marketing upside so a little bit back to Starbucks you know you're one of the you're, you're very young for to be on a board of a company that's so powerful and it's been around for so long uh, and has attained the status that it has do you think that other companies need to bring in that kind of young blood that really understands like social from a native perspective that aren't just sort of like oh it's the new thing these kids are doing but really think of it as like no this is this is everyone's life I guess I'm still relatively new to it. Um, it's hard for me to, to say um, for, with certainty, but I'd, I'd say that in general, whether it's at the board level or certainly at the executive team level, it really behooves these brands, if they're serving uh, youth or whatever demographic they're serving, to make sure that's represented among the people making decisions.
Yeah, I mean, I think some of the coolest companies that we've seen tonight uh, have been companies filled with with you know people who are just twenty something and they're and and that perspective to say like this is not this is something we grew up with. Uh, I think that that's that's super important. Do you? Do you worry about companies that don't have enough young blood with them, uh, the ones that seem like they're they're sort of aging and not keeping with the times? I guess I haven't really given it much thought, but I mean, it, it makes sense. And I, I think being here in Silicon Valley and being in technology, we, we have the luxury of seeing what young people can do and that it's almost the irreverence that trumps experience in many cases. And I, I think that other industries can benefit from that. Again, they can benefit at the board level, executive team, or they can work with technology companies that can infuse those new ideas and that con constant innovation into their, into their business practices. So if you don't have young people in your company, become the babysitter of a company that does. Great. Well, thanks so much for uh, coming tonight to the Tech Fellow Awards. Thank you so much. Cheers.